I'm Eve Sanborn. I'm a forum editor for Student Life, and I'm here today with Jeff Nelson, our Student Union President. Eve, well, thanks for having me. Thank you for joining us. All right. Um, so let's get right down to it. Uh, first thing we want to talk about is email. Um, okay. First of all, what kind of feedback have you guys been getting about the pilot program? Pilot program has been going great. They've been giving some great suggestions on just usability. Um, things about how the, the service, the, the display name of the service is one of the good suggestions we've gotten back. Um, just also suggestions about how students who are transitioning from Gmail or you know Squirrel, squirrel Mail or something like that can best utilize Google Store and Live at EDU. Um, this weekend, the the online versions of Microsoft Word just went up, so they're testing away at that. So it's it's some good feedback, and I think people are really excited about it. Sounds great. Can you talk more about the decision to transition the rest of the student body in March as mm -hmm. opposed to the beginning or end of the school year? Well, um, we, we, as you know, we originally wanted to have the pilot program last September, and so this would have been, the, the student body would have been transitioned probably fully at the be beginning of this semester. Uh, the timeline has been delayed a bit, but we're going to do it right. So when students get this product, it's going to work, they're going to like it, and they're going to enjoy it, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a good thing for the university. Um, so we wanted to do it sometime this school year so that we can continue to get feedback and then when next year's freshman class comes in, it's a seamless process. Everyone's already into it. Let's move on and talk about the fundraising you guys have been doing for Haiti. Okay. Um, how close are we to meeting the student body goal? Well, we don't have final numbers in yet. And okay. um, with individual donations, we've gotten, we've gotten some very generous students who have given a lot. And, and I think about that, we're at about 7,000 just through the online site. But then we've got a number of student groups who have done amazing things. We're probably about 10, 11, or 12,000 um, in terms of donations with everything considered yet. And we're going to start doing some more pushing in the next couple of weeks. I'm confident that we can make the $20,000 goal in, in the next two or three weeks. And, and I look forward to us doing that and, and you know, uniting as a student body after we do so. Let's go on and talk about over-programming. I know that's something you've been uh, pushing a lot. This line. weekend was, was another good example of it. <laughs> yes, yeah, so we had a uh, Poetry Slam, Pikers, Slam, Pikers. Atlanta. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, yeah, why is this an issue? And, um, you know, I guess on the flip side, isn't it a good thing kind of for students to have different options and for mm -hmm. groups to be able to do what they want? Why is this something you're concerned about? Well, I think if you look at it, um, you know, this, this weekend, there were a lot of great events. I wanted to go to the Poetry Slam, LNYF, and the Pikers concert. And this wasn't as bad as it gets, but students often have to make some tough choices about which one of these events that a lot of my friends are into, are participating in, that my student activity fee helps to cover, which one do I go to? You know, it, it's a hard choice. And, and, and that's not bad in and of itself, but when you look at weekends where there's nothing going on, you know, and students are saying, well, I wish there was something going on, I wish I could get into something, um, then that's when overprogramming becomes a problem. And we've gotten great data from surveys and um, focus groups with, with student group leaders um, to really define what overprogramming means. And you're right, students do need options. And, and it's not really overprogramming if I'm having, you know, a, 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 an a cappella concert and you're having, you know, a culinary um, lesson, a, a cooking lesson or something like that. That's not overprogramming because those, you know, appeal to two different audiences. Um, so it's really honing in on what overprogramming is, how we define it, looking at the calendar and seeing where it actually exists, why it exists, and how we can positively encourage student groups to, to program in such a way where it's more strategic, they're working together and collaborating, so the students, students don't have to make those tough choices, and we get bigger attendance at events, we're spending more money efficiently, um, and it's a benefit for everyone. So how do you, as a member of Student Union, push for groups to do that? And what kind of you know, regulations are you looking at or ways of allocating money mm -hmm. in order to make sure that that happens? Well, right now, and we're going to release a package for overprogramming, actually, in the next couple of weeks. Nora Palin's VP of Programming is going to be putting out an overprogramming survey to the student body about how they choose to go to events. Um, and we're also there, there's going to be a meeting with student group leaders. Um, I, I think it actually happened today, um, a couple hours ago. So we're, we're still in the data collecting stage, but what I anticipate this package being is less about regulation and more about how does student union create the environment where collaborative programming can happen, because I don't think we've even taken that step. So some of the things we're looking at, one of the things I'm really excited about just from a technical end, um, is that when a student group goes to submit a budget or a budget appeal, when they select a date for the event, 
then I'm going to use some computer science terminology, but an, an AJAX uh, function call will happen. And magically on the, the form, the, every event that's happening on that day will show up. So the student group knows immediately what types of events are happening that are, that are going to potentially conflict. We're also thinking about, um, and not only thinking about, but planning to create a proposed events calendar. So right now we've got the link, which is events that are going to happen. But as student groups are making budgets and things like that, if they select a date or a range of dates, um, that's going to go on another calendar that's just proposed events, and student groups will be able to see that. Um, more monthly forms with student groups to talk about different programming initiatives and breaking that down by um, the budget allocation team. So um, within Treasury, they, they already break the groups down to handle budget interviews and maybe hosting a monthly form with those groups so all a cappella groups can get together and say, well, what are we doing you know, with, with music and concerts on campus and things like that. Um, encouraging, encouraging more use of the link. Uh, we're going to be ramping up publicity and um, just usage of that in, in the coming weeks and months. So those types of things, I think fostering that environment um, will, will have you know, much of an impact. Um, we don't have to go, go to the side of regulations and you know, doing things with budgets and stuff like that. I want to end with a couple questions about okay. state of your administration and student union. <laughs> <All right>. um, <laughs> so if you had an approval rating right now, what do you think it would be? <laughs> My personal approval rating? Yes. It's funny. Well, it's funny because at the end of last year I graded ourselves, and, and I'm a very hard grader. I gave, our, I gave us a B minus, I think, okay. um, in terms of just initiatives and what we've gotten accomplished and uh, what we set out to do. Um, I think maybe it's a, it's a little higher. Uh, okay. But... You know, if I had to give myself an, an approval rating, um, you, you know, it's hard to, to think about it in terms of numbers. Um, but I think in general, the students that are informed, because I think there are still a lot of students that are not informed, and, and that's why I think it's my responsibility to make them informed, and if we failed in that regard, then um, I do take responsibility for it. But other students that are, that are informed, and once they become informed, and they look at the, the change in tone, of this administration and, and what we've tried to do, you know, when you think about just concrete things students are going to get this year, go Wooster, Live at EDU, new email system, it's a, it's a great tool, students love it, it's going to save the university hundreds of thousands of, do of dollars. You know, there's, there's a new menu in the village, late night chicken and waffles, it's really good, I encourage people to go and eat it. The village is open at 2 a.m. on weekends, stir fries open an hour later. There are concrete changes that would not be here if student union didn't make those issues a priority this year. And so I think when they look at the issues and look at what we've done and see how we're different from pe previous administrations, they're going to be pretty pleased. Now, um, have we been perfect? Have we achieved everything we wanted to? Not at all. Um, and we've had some missteps along the way. Some people started out, didn't continue <laughs> on with us. But in general, I think we've done a good job. And um, I think we can always get better. And I want students to continue to challenge us and hold us accountable so we do get better. Sounds good. Um, and then last question. Uh, I know announcements about who's running for uh, the next uh, SU exec board are coming up. Will mm -hmm. you be making any endorsements? <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I won't, from my uh, capacity as president, I won't be making any endorsements. Um, and it's something I've thought long and hard about. And um, it's something where I don't want this office to become politicized and in, in that, you know, I'm dictating what's going to happen next year, because I really want the students to, to listen to, to the debate uh, between who, whomever runs and, and really judge them on their plan, the merits, what they've accomplished, and what I've done or who I endorse. I don't want that to have any bearing on it whatsoever. So we've got a good field of candidates, I think, um, just from the rumors that I'm hearing. And, and I tell people, I don't want to know too much about who's <laughs> running and what your plans are, because I want to be just as surprised and learn while everyone else is learning. But from what I'm hearing, we've got um, you know people that are really interested in this organization from Senate, Treasury, exec positions, class councils, and that's good. For the last two years, we've had a lot of uncontested elections, and part of renewing student activism has been to get people more interested so they can get in these positions and continue to continue the trend. And I think we've we've you know incrementally gone further in that that direction, and so I think the elections will be a positive reinforcement of that fact. So I'm looking forward to it. Great. Well, thanks a lot. Okay. Thank you, Eve.